March 1941, Mare Island Naval Shipyard, Vallejo, California. A welding torch S-glow danced across the shadowy construction bay of an incomplete submarine while Edward Ted Nelson, earning $11 daily as a welder, scratched into his notebook with mounting exasperation. A superior method must exist. Scaffolding surrounded him like dense undergrowth. Laborers perspiring in confined quarters under timber decking, wrestling with fasteners whose installation had consumed complete work shifts. The methodology remained primitive, unaltered since the great war boring apertures, erecting supports, inserting bolts, tightening nuts, devouring irreplaceable days that America could ill afford as conflict threatened at the nation's doorstep. Nelson, age 36, had devoted 15 years to perfecting his craft with metal. Electricity and machinery and his Navy overseers remained unaware that this particular welder had already devised the solution to their universal challenge. The concept was straightforward. Fuse threaded posts directly onto the steel structure. Secure timber boards from overhead eliminating supports, bolts, and squandered manpower. Yet when he submitted his drawings to his commanding officers, he faced rejection. Established protocols exist, they informed him. The Navy regarded Nelson as merely a welder. Nelson saw time slipping away. Dismissed and mocked, he constructed his device independently within a modest. Vallejo Garage creating a prototype stud welding instrument featuring a spring-actuated plunger, an electrical activation mechanism, and a compact ceramic shield that retained flux steady even on vertical or inverted applications, an engineering solution so refined it appeared self-evident once demonstrated. By May 1941, functionality was perfect. He could fuse a stud in less than one second swifter, more robust and more elementary than any technology the shipyards had previously encountered. His companions advised him to resign and commercialize it independently, which he proceeded to do. On June 20, 1941, Ted Nelson departed from Mari Island, abandoning reliable income for an ambiguous aspirations. Carrying $11 in his possession and $95,000 acquired through a government financing initiative, he established the Nelson Speciality Welding Equipment Corporation, resolved to demonstrate his concept could transform industry. Throughout several months, transactions remained sluggish until December 7, 1941 Pearl Harbor. The nation entered warfare. Abruptly, shipyards stretching from San Francisco to Richmond urgently needed accelerated construction, and the identical individuals who had dismissed Nelson's proposal were suddenly pleading for his welding instruments. Requests poured inward Kaiser, Bethlehem Steel, even Mare Island directly. Within mere weeks, Nelson's modest operation faced overwhelming demand. He inaugurated a manufacturing facility in San Leandro, employing 20 laborers, Subsequently, 50, then 150, manufacturing 30 welding instruments and thousands of studs daily. Submarine deck assembly durations plummeted from six days to one. By late 1942, Nelson's methodology had preserved the Navy exceeding five million labor hours. When Navy officials ultimately arrived to present him a commendation, Captain Harrison from the Bureau of Ships acknowledged, Your submission was inadequately assessed. That represented an error. Occasionally, the optimal method to benefit your nation is disregarding official protocols and simply resolving the challenge. By 1943, Nelson's enterprise employed over 400 laborers and provisioned shipyards throughout the country. Stud welding transcended mere speed. It proved transformational. Every submarine, destroyer, and aircraft carrier constructed after 1942 utilized Nelson's methodology. Submarine production timelines collapsed. Portsmouth Naval Shipyard delivered four submarines within a single day a benchmark never surpassed. America manufactured 203 submarines throughout the conflict, each necessitating thousands of welded studs. Calculate those minutes preserved across hundreds of vessels. And Nelson's breakthrough had eliminated years from America's wartime manufacturing. Liberty ships, constructed by the thousands, required up to 8,000 studs individually. At the zenith of 1943, American shipyards launched three new vessels daily. Nelson's compact welding instrument contributed to enabling that achievement. On May 11, 1943, 
The Secretary of the Navy awarded Nelson's facility the Army Navy E Award for Excellence in Production, recognizing the estimated 50 million labor hours conserved the equivalent to 19,000 years of human effort. We didn't accomplish this for recognition, Nelson addressed his laborers. We accomplished it because our nation required it. His innovation didn't merely accelerate manufacturing, it enabled a transformed workforce. As men departed for combat, women occupied the shipyards, Rosie the Riveter and Wendy the Welder. Nelson's instrument demanded minimal instruction, rendering it ideal for America's wartime labor force. By 1944, his creation was deployed throughout the Allied Armada and Essex-class carriers, Aero-class battleships, Liberty ships, and submarines pursuing Japanese supply lines. Accelerated vessels meant additional convoys safeguarded, more Marines deployed, more Triumphs secured. The productivity Nelson generated converted into genuine combat capability, lives preserved through efficiency. When hostilities concluded in August 1945, Manufacturing decelerated and agreements disappeared. However, Nelson stood prepared. He transitioned towards civilian sectors bridges, high-rises, automobiles, proving that stud welding represented not exclusively a wartime breakthrough, but a peacetime transformation. In 1950, he transferred his enterprise to TR, cementing his heritage as the individual who had revolutionized contemporary manufacturing. Generations afterward, his identity persists. The Nelson trademark, presently within Stanley Engineered Fastening, manufacturing millions of welding studs annually. His innovation has advanced through robotics and precision mechanisms, yet the fundamental principle remains unchanged. One stud, one arc, one second. Presently, it's employed in high-rises, bridges, nuclear facilities, and even restoring historical vessels like the USS Texas and Pompanito. Ships that continued depending on Nelson's 1941 engineering, Ted Nelson survived to witness his creation achieve universal adoption, to observe the Cold War's conclusion, and to understand that one welder's obstinate unwillingness to accept rejection had altered history. He wasn't a general or an admiral, yet his instrument was time, and he commanded it with brilliance. Ted Nelson, the $11 daily welder who declined to cease innovating, demonstrated that advancement doesn't invariably wear insignia. Sometimes it wears a welding mask.